Matthew chapter 4, reading from verses 8 to 11. The reading was already done. And without further ado, I will not reread it in the interest of time. But this morning's theme, igniting true worship, mirroring God's word for ministry. Friends, if we are to ignite true worship, it is important for us to understand that igniting true worship means to inflame, ignite, true, genuine, authentic, and real worship, reverence, and adoration. It is, brothers and sisters, to inflame genuine, authentic, and real worship and adoration and reverence for God. It is the dynamic, explosive outburst for God from the heart. It is the kindling of the fire within that compels you, brothers and sisters, to offer to God a sound, a service, and or a sacrifice that is the highest quality and that is befitting of a king, and not just any king, but befitting of the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. The challenge then, brothers and sisters, is not for us to reignite true worship, but it is for us to ignite true worship. And this, brothers and sisters, takes us back to square one, takes us back to basics and takes us back to the beginning. For we are not called to reignite true worship, but we are called to ignite true worship. We are challenged then, brothers and sisters, to ignite true worship. And if truth be told, igniting and not reigniting, it is then safe to assume that the worship we may have offered thus far might be seen as waterlogged, might be found wanting, and might be found not worthy. It is plausible, brothers and sisters, to say that if we are to reignite present worship, this may not be what God wants, but maybe igniting true worship is potentially what might just work. Brothers and sisters, while worshiping while reigniting worship is something that might not be wanted, igniting true worship might just be what is wanted. For if we are to worship God truly, and if we are to ignite true worship, if this worship we offer, brothers and sisters, fail to mirror God's spirit and truth, it is not true worship. If we lift our hands only for others to see that we are lifting our hands, this, brothers and sisters, is not true worship. And if, brothers and sisters, we have gotten to the point and place 
where the created is replacing the creator as the object and subject of true worship. This, friends, is not true worship. But the good news, you know, friends, is that in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus marches and demonstrates to us that the object of true worship and the subject of true worship is God and God alone. Jesus shows up, brothers and sisters, to ignite true worship for us. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Almighty God. It is written, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Friends, it is written, thou shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. It is written, brothers and sisters, the formula for true worship is found in the text. It is written. And Jesus, brothers and sisters, even Jesus relies upon the written word. And so friends, if we are to ignite true worship, true worship cannot be devoid of God's written word, but it must be dependent on it. The word is that we must ignite true worship with God's word. For maybe, just maybe, the current waterlogged worship, the current worship that is found wanting, and the current worship that is not worthy might just not be what God's want. The word, then, brothers and sisters, is for us to recognize that true worship requires focus. It is being focused on the prize and not falling weak to the wit of the wicked one. Jesus has his laser focused on the mission, which was always, brothers and sisters, to be led by the Spirit. And friends, like Jesus, I must give you a shock early on. Like Jesus, friends, we will be tempted after this 40-day fast. We will be tried after this 40-day fast. And we will be, no doubt, tested after this 40-day fast. But like Jesus, brothers and sisters, we are reminded that we are to fix our eyes on the prize, remaining steadfast, firm and true, and not falling weak to the wicked one, but overcoming the wicked one with the word of Almighty God. Brothers and sisters, Jesus demonstrates to us that if we are to ignite true worship, True worship must be dependent on God's word. True worship cannot be devoid of God's true word, but must be dependent on it. There are some important lessons, friends, that Jesus leaves with us through Matthew's writing to the Jews that we can apply to our lives as Christians as we seek to ignite true worship. Friends, lesson number one. True worship is about God's presence and not his presence. Let me go again. True worship 
is about God's presence and not his presence. In other words, true worship is about opening the gate to God's presence and not God's gifts. All these things I will give to you if thou shall fall down and worship me, says the devil. And even though this is not written in your Bibles, and I must admit, it is not written in mine either. But I believe in this very moment, Jesus stood there thinking to himself, silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. For I will not be sidetracked. I will not be sidelined from the true reason for my worship. For it is not about God's gifts, but it is about offering to God our gifts and tapping into God's presence. For true worship, brothers and sisters, comes from a place of wanting and longing to be in God's presence. It is to recognize, friends, that it is just about Jesus, not his presence, but his presence. Nothing else will do, says the songwriter. Nothing else will suffice, for I want more of Jesus, and more of Jesus, and more of Jesus. For I have touched the hem of his garment, and I have felt the leading of his hand, but today my eyes are fixed on the higher prize. I wish to see his face, his face so great in this place. For more of Jesus is what I want. It is to know that Jesus, it is you, and Jesus alone will do. Friends, true worship is for us to understand carefully that it is about God's presence and not his presence. It is, brothers and sisters, to know that we are drawing closer to the gates of God's presence and not fussing up ourselves about God's gifts. For he reminds us, friends, that seek ye first mm -hmm, the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You see, brothers and sisters, God is a promise keeper. He never fails on his words. He never turns his back on his words. And so if he tells us then that we are to seek his presence and not his presence, we are to remain confident. We are to hold on to God's word. We are to trust in God's word that he will not fail. But if we seek his presence, his presence shall be added unto us. Friends, you know, I know it is not impossible for us to have needs. It is not impossible for us to have struggles Unless we believe that struggles and needs are not a part of a Christian's life, we are sadly mistaken. But even if we have a need, even if we have struggles, 
Jesus demonstrates to us in the text that our needs, our struggles, our desires are not overlooked. But he challenges us, friends, to seek after the source whose supply is endless. For in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. As we seek to ignite true worship, brothers and sisters, worship that is not waterlogged. Worship that is not found wanting. And worship that is worthy to God. Jesus challenges us not to seek after God's presence, but to seek after his presence. But not only does Jesus challenges us in this direction to seek after God's presence and not his presence. Jesus challenges us, brothers and sisters. And I must admit this might be a difficult one for us to accept. But Jesus challenges us, friends, that we are to revisit who we worship and what we worship. For true worship must be offered to a true God. And I know, yes, we are all Christians, saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, with Jesus on our mind. But the question I have to ask, brothers and sisters, is if true worship is about a sound service or sacrifice, what have our sound been like recently? Have we been quarreling and complaining or have we been praising God? Have we offered service to God or ourselves? Have we offered to God the sacrifice that he desires? Or have we given that 15 minutes early in the morning to TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram? What have we really been doing with our sound service and sacrifice? And oftentimes, brothers and sisters, subconsciously we offer to God substandard sounds, service, and sacrifices. Brothers and sisters, it is not about self. It is about serving God. It is not about self-interest, self-aggrandizement. For oftentimes we fail to recognize that we are not the carriers of what is within us. But it is what is within us that is carrying us. And it is when we come to the realization, brothers and sisters, that we are all servants and not the ones to be served. That is when true worship can be ignited. But finally, brothers and sisters, Jesus teaches us about what to worship. He teaches us about who to worship. But in closing, friends, Jesus teaches us that worship works. True worship works. And this is demonstrated to us that true worship allows 
Abba Father, to action angels to attend to us. After Jesus shows us that igniting true worship is focused on God's presence and not his presence. After Jesus shows us who true worship ought to be directed to. Jesus shows us, brothers and sisters, that true worship works. Maybe then, friends, we have not seen the effects of true worship because we have not put true worship to the test. For true worship works, and Jesus demonstrates that to us. And if true worship works for Jesus, true worship works for you and for me. And so brothers and sisters, we are encouraged to ignite true worship. For when we ignite true worship, friends, it is not about us, but it is about God. It is about the sound we offer, the service we offer, and the sacrifice we offer to God. True worship family is demonstrated by Jesus himself, where he shows us that it is about God's presence and not his presence. And if this is the case, brothers and sisters, my prayer then is that God sends fire from heaven to ignite our worship so that our worship will be pleasing unto God. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen.